Crypto Dog to the rescue here. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. All helps my channel and the dogs I'll be rescuing in the future. Uh, so let's uh, let's get right into it here a little bit. So uh, this one I wanted to go over a macro perspective and you know possibly what people are kind of telling us. I've been learning this throughout the year that the opinions that I'm seeing are not in tune with macro trading or swing trading or day trading. There's like they're mixing in macro perspectives in with your swing and day trade perspectives if you're trying to you know trade quickly and make make a quick buck you know on the on the sideways down market that we are having doesn't matter if you have a downtrend or a sideways market or an uptrend market you can make money on these things and well when people are showing you macro um, points of view and and you know i've taken it too and in the past i'm guilty of this and you're taking this as swing trade or just overall knowledge as it works in any way you're trading it doesn't and that's why i've been trying to show you you know universal ways of trading whether it be macro uh swing or day trades using the 20 ma and the 200 ma those are universal now can you use other ma's absolutely i use the 9 ma on my swing trades as well so and we'll get into that um but i did want to go over um the reason why i got into crypto reason why i got into cryptocurrency is because i see that there's huge potential of this we're in its infancy and on a macro level, you know, I have coins holding on the side here that I don't even touch, you know, and it's gone, they've gone down dramatically this year. I'm not in it for the, for the long run with those coins. Those are long-term coins. And then people will say, you know, don't marry your coins. Well, you know, you're investing, right? So I'm investing in these on a macro sense. So when I make a certain amount of money in the next two, three years, four years with these coins, I'm going to start cashing them out. But until then, I'm just holding on to them. So am I married to them? I guess so. I'm a little bit married to them and on an investment point of view. So this is where I'm kind of getting at. Well, how are you trading? Are you trading on a macro level? Are you trading on a swing trade level? Are you trading on a day trade level? How are you trading and what is your goals on this? So then it really does take um, a precedence on your perspective in trading. So, um, you know, let's get right into it here um, and we will go from there. Okay, so at least I'm showing you the right thing here. Uh, let's get into here. So that was just the screensaver I, I saw of the stock market. It is, um, you know, when we trade these coins, it's pretty much the same thing that we're doing on the stock market, right? We're trading stocks. We're trading, you know, something that's worth a, a tangible asset, intangible asset, as opposed to, you know, with cryptocurrency. And you're trading it for another intangible asset or USD. So, um it's it's comparable in that way with the stock market and the way that we trade and the way that we look at this technical analysis and so on so bitcoin whole coin macro cap 209 billion bitcoin dominance 53 percent 0.7 going up a little bit uh price of bitcoin 64.89 the volume is 3.6 billion um or million billion million billion so yeah so it you know the volumes are really um are kind of hurting the market um, is, you know, with the big boys anyways, you know, um, but, you know, I, one, let's get into some technical analysis here on a macro level. Okay. Let me get my big head out of the way here. Um, so looking at these wedges, right? All right. Everybody knows what the wedges look like. And, and if you're starting here and you're going all the way down, well, now it's at a point where, oh, it should break out, right? Oh, it's going to break out or it's it's not going to and it's going to go to another all-time low based on this wedge. This wedge tells you nothing about uptrends and nothing about downtrends. If you're going to use something, use something just real as a quick, quick step. Use the Ichimoku cloud. You can use the Ichimoku cloud and kind of show you on a sense, you know, based on these um, time lengths, you know, 9, 26, 52, 26, um, that it's on a downtrend. It's not above these green or red clouds. The last time it was above a green or red cloud was dramatically anyways, was back here at the, in July. And it broke that red cloud and it came all the way back up and then it broke the green cloud and stayed pretty much on a downtrend and it really can't just break, break out on a bull signal. So that's basically where we're at now. We're hitting kind of a precipice with this wedge, right? No, we're, we're not hitting any type of a precipice with these wedges saying it's going to go up or down dramatically 
it, it just doesn't work that way. And then, um, as you can see, and we've, and we've all learned this all year long, it's not something new um, that we're looking at here. So I want to, you know, take a cape, take an overall picture of this real quick. And now I want you to look at this real quick. Okay. So from here, as you can see, right. And it's gone down and it's gone down. So just according to this, I retweeted this from uh, a guy on Twitter. Uh, what's his name? Crypto Freak at Teddy Kleps. And, uh, you know, I, psychology of the, of the Wall Street market, it does absolutely work this way when you have these huge, huge price spikes like we did at the beginning of 2018. And then these huge drops. And then this is kind of what the psychology of it all works based on price and time going sideways here, right? As you can see up here, price and time. This is a simplified market cycle. Hit a peak, down into the trough, and now it comes back to a recovery, and then it starts prospering, right? Well, the stock market's all has obviously been on a huge uptrend for the past seven years, you know, maybe even four, five, six, seven years, just constantly on an uptrend after it recovered from the 2008, right, bubble, and now we are on this prospering trend when it comes to Wall Street. So when we go back over to here and we'll look at Bitcoin real quick, same thing. It's gone all the way down. We're now on this psychological level where we are possibly in a depression. And now we're going to, if we start going back up in November, December, this disbelief, okay, everybody's going to say, oh, this is a sucker's rally. And that's the same thing that happened here, right? The disbelief, the rally will fail like all the others, and then hope, and then optimism, and belief, and thrill. And so if we know that these waves are coming, based on retail in cryptocurrency, this cyclical retail that we have, um, then we are in a depression stage, which is basically a great time to start buying coins if you believe that. So I'm not a financial advisor, just a YouTuber. Take it with a grain of salt, but really look at it from a macro point of view is what this video is all about. And you can see that the psychology of it all really does work that way. If we can go into the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, if it loads, doo -doo -doo -doo, um, yeah, still loading, but today we're at 27, right? Well, as you can see, it's gone kind of pretty much down and now it's starting out with, can, can say, disbelief. Everybody's still kind of at that disbelief level um, of cryptocurrency. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. You know, when, when it comes to that stuff, but uh, I did want to show everybody. So another thing I did want to uh, touch on with this is uh, is actually not that. Do, 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 do. JP Morgan, U.S. recession by 2020 has a 60% chance is crypto an alternative. So this is a good little article that I found, and I kind of agree with this. I've been watching the stock market for years. Um, and based on this huge bull run that we've had for years on end, we are due for a correction and it's going to be a dramatic correction and it's going to be a currency correction, not a real estate thing like we had in 2008, none of the sort. Um, it's obviously going to be a part of it, but it's not going to be the cause of it. Cause of it is going to be obviously a currency, um, bubble based on our currency, is just going, you know, value is just going to take a drop. Um, these guys are saying that based on JP Morgan's, um, uh, they have an intricate model that tracks virtually every indicator that could contribute to the global economy. Some of the indicators include compensation growth, consumer and business sentiment, and labor participation. So, uh, what, what, you know, after reading all this, is crypto an alternative? Uh, during a period in which many economists forecast a market crash and a major recession in the next two years, the demand for crypto has increased rapidly. So is crypto going to be a safe haven when the U.S. dollar or any currency basically value drops dramatically and we go into a recession? I say yes. And this is kind of the reason why. While not portrayed by the prices of major cryptocurrencies, financial institutions such as Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup have established infrastructures to target institutional investors planning to invest in the digital asset market. Now, 
The bad thing about it is banks and investment firms have prevented from, from, a, from establishing businesses in the cryptocurrency sector due to the lack of regulatory certainty in the market. Experts have stated that the abrupt, abruptly emerging trend of major financial institutions entering the crypto market suggests the demand for crypto from investors in the traditional finance sector has increased rapidly in the se past several months. So just in the past several months, all right, banks and investment firms are starting to kind of turn a corner, but yet they don't want to get in based on the lack of regulatory certainty in the market. Yet, Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup are, have established infrastructure. So that's telling you right now, they're gearing up for it. But regulatory certainty is really hurting it from going basically mainstream in the banks and, and other investment firms um, until they get regulatory certainty that their money is not going to be taken. And, but at the same time, Fidelity, Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup are establishing infrastructures, and that's going to be a good uh, start. So get these those three guys in. They can figure out the kinks of the regulatory um, uncertainty, and therefore the banks and, and other investment firms will follow trend once they see money flow coming in based on the cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency will be a safe haven once our USD currency takes a crash, basically. And the reason why, you know, Goldman Sachs and Fidelity and Citigroup are getting into it are, are things like this, you know, $183 billion in USD was transferred for like six cents all at once. Didn't happen in like a minute, but it happened, you know, in, in the span of a few hours. And then the, the money was moved. The Ethereum was moved, basically. Now, that's huge for, for, for players like Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup. That's huge for them. You know how much money they spend in fees? And if they can just cut down in fees by just doing that, six cents, and they can move to $185 million, that is saving them so much money right there up front. I mean, anybody in accounting and anybody in finances are going to tell you is it's it's the fees is what really eats up a lot of things when you're moving money internationally. And you're moving. I mean, it's it's just a headache for for regulatory things and how much money it takes for the the banks to verify and sign and confirm all that money. It's that's going all out the door. And Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup see that. And of course, so the banks and so on. But again, there's no regulatory uncertainty. So they don't care about the money influx in if there's so much unknown that it's going to be going out or stolen before it even comes in. So these are just little things, you know, that I find on Reddit and then on Twitter as well. Um, and, and it's good to see these type of things when you can move $183 million and it only costs you six cents ether in doing it. Great things to see, you know, I mean, that's just basically what it comes down to it. Um, and, you know, again, mountain macro level, psychology is a big thing. Psychology is huge. And when you start seeing, I'm not saying that it's patternistic, if, uh, when you, come, you know, the stock market's comparable to the crypto market. It is when it comes to psychology. That's for sure. It is when it comes to people's money and even people start losing money and they start going through anxiety, denial and panic and they can't afford it. And, Anger starts coming in, depression, and now another disbelief cycle is coming through. Um, I, this is definitely analogous in that way, I believe. Take it with a grain of salt if you don't believe it, but don't believe these wedges. I mean, really, these wedges tell you nothing. It just shows you, oh, it's on a downtrend. Well, you know, it, it, we've been saying that for months now. And when I retrace these, you know, let's say we was back in May, you know, or back in July and June, you know, we had these up here. And you can say that that was a wedge there and it broke the wedge and we're now in this bull market. No, as you can see, it, it was forced to, you know, based on the way it's going. And now it's forced to do it again uh, on this wedge here. You know, it's going to break. No, it's coming to a wedge here to the end of the wedge. Is it going to go down? Or is it going to go? That makes no sense in the way. It, it, if Again, if it was that easy and that elementary, we'd all be making money right now. We'd all know just to keep, you know, Buying on, uh, selling on the down, and then buying on this little up on the on a downtrend market, you know, it does doesn't work that way. We don't know if it's going to go up or down based on the wedge. You have to look at the twenty and the two hundred MA a little bit more closer, 
use your MACD, use your RSIs, use your Ichimoku if you want to see, um, you know, it, what kind of trend we're on. Are we on a downward trend? Are we on a sideways trend? Are we on an upward trend of the market? You know, these things will tell you quickly, just on a quick, quick basis, which way things are going. As we all know, it's on a downtrend, but I think it's based on the psychology of the market. And there's a lot of unknown uncertainty. We're in the Wild West, so on and so forth. So I just want to touch on that, you know, and again, crypto fear and greed index. 27 today, extreme fear yesterday, 21. Last week, 24. Last month, 37. So we're all just kind of just hanging out right there in this whole kind of disbelief, depression, you know, what's going on and are we going to be going up? And everybody says we're in a bullish market right now. So I'm going to say everybody, but a lot of people that I uh, follow are saying we're still in a bullish market and you need to start buying and you need to gear up for the next one. You know, don't buy anything because a YouTuber says it. Buy it because you, you've done your own research. You under, you know, you, you, you got a pretty good perspective, a good feel for the market. You understand that possibly, possibly we're on a cyclical uh, market and retail where retail starts booming again at the end of the year, um, beginning of next year. So futures has a really, you know, huge hand in it this year that really caused a lot of this downtrend, I believe, and uh, the psychology kind of goes along with it. So uh, take it with a grain of salt, but, uh, you know, do your own research, but, you know, I'm trying to help everybody out because uh, I believe this, um, this helps everybody, you know, and, and what we're all trying to do. And um, uh, obviously I, I have an end goal with helping dogs. So uh, I want to get to that. And this is helping you guys help you help me basically. So please smash the like button, hit the bell, subscribe, comment below, leave your Ethereum address in, in, uh, Bit or Bitcoin for uh, a cold storage uh, giveaway. So you guys uh, keep up the grind.